Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here. Today I'm doing another DVD, portable DVD player hack. And this one is actually inspired by a later model AudioVox portable DVD player that has the batteries all built in. Whereas this one is an earlier model. It's the AudioVox D1917. It has this big heavy metal plate on the bottom. I'm not sure why. It's not actually connected to any uh, chips to heatsink, but this thing has kind of like a laptop style snap-on portable battery that holds a, a couple of uh, lithium-ion cells, the 18650s, but um, it weighs down the back of it. It's totally cumbersome and annoying, and I don't like it, so I went ahead and installed batteries inside the thing. This took a little bit of hackery, but I think it's going to work. Um, these are two lithium polymer cells. This is the board that was in that external battery pack. It need this is the it has a regulation monitor circuit and some other stuff. Um, so that's important. And basically I just wired that to the plug on the back here, wired that to the board and then wired the three terminals for the battery plus minus and middle to the two uh, cells here because it's a 7.4 volt nominal voltage. And uh, did some other things to make this work. I actually had to drill under I had to kind of drill the leads that were sticking out under here and under here and some of these caps so it wouldn't poke this battery under here. And then I had to, I had to pinch off some uh, some plastic, uh, ah, for the standoffs. And here's another standoff that I cut off as well. Uh, and then also I had to remove one capacitor back here and replace it with an SMD one on the bottom. It's just a 10 microfarad, so that was easy. And, uh, and then I had to remount this LED because it was mounted to the board so I ran two wires to it glued it on top of the battery here that's the charging indicator light which is actually on right now if you can see that it is charging these batteries so uh, yeah mostly it's just making the whole thing fit that's kind of the uh, the thing I'm trying to tackle here and um, from my testing I believe it does fit and will close properly I could try to do it one-handed right now, but this might be kind of tricky while I'm videoing. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it closes. It closes pretty well, and I'll get it all finished up. i got to run all the wires correctly under here and everything. This thing has been through a lot. Look at all that hot glue around the jack. That jack was broken. Probably the first, first problem I fixed on it. But yeah, it's still holding up. still works pretty well. I like this model because it has an SD card reader. Um, and a USB port, so you can, um, you know, read your video, some of your video files anyway. It won't read all the codecs, but it'll read a lot of them. It's also got an external video input, which is nice, and an external video output. It's composite, but that's still really cool. But the number one reason why I really like this model is it's got analog brightness control and volume control. And the brightness control they took out of all the later models, and it's all digital, which is boo, thumbs down. I want to be able to just you know, control the brightness with my finger when I need to, not have to go through a bunch of menus. So I like this model for that. The downsides of this model is the screen is definitely lower resolution. And the biggest downside is you can't, you can't uh, uh, fast forward with the button panel here. You can only fast forward with the remote, which I don't have. Bummer. Other than that, it's really great. The screen actually has nicer colors in the newer model. And uh, yeah, having the SD card feature is also pretty sweet. So that's it for this video. And uh, have fun hacking your portable DVD players out there, fitting batteries in them. Uh, just note if you do do this, uh, these batteries are liable to, you know, they're, it's kind of dangerous in the sense that these can explode and stuff. You should look up safety features for that stuff. If Before you do this hack, make sure you don't puncture these or try to cut them open or anything stupid like that. Um, they are they are kind of dangerous, but if you hook it up properly and you hook it up to this board um, and you keep an eye on it, you know, don't leave it in the hot sun, unattended kind of thing, uh, you'll be fine. So, yeah, at your own risk, though. Usual disclaimer. And uh, do at your own risk. And that's it for this video. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.